الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome again to the inevitable journey. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Al Bara ibn Azib radiallahu an reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam one day was passing by and he found a group of companions gathering somewhere. And he asked why those are gathering. He was told, O oh, Messenger of Allah, they are digging a graveyard for a deceased. The Prophet وسلم, went and looked into the depth of that graveyard that they were digging and preparing for the deceased. And he teared to the extent that his tears were dropping in that ground. And he said, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْيَوْمِ فَأَعِدُّوا أي إخواني, my brothers, for this day, prepare, get ready. في سنن الترمذي حديث هانئ the freed slave of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. He reported that when the graveyard or when Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu would stand in front of a graveyard, he would weep and cry to the extent that his tears would wet his beard. And then they would tell him, Ya Uthman, O oh, Uthman, we would talk to you about Jannah and Hellfire and you would not get affected as much as you do once you stand in front of a graveyard. He said, رضي الله عن عثمان بن عفان إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying إن القبر أول منازل الآخرة. The graveyard is the first place that a deceased go to in the hereafter. The first stop, the first station of the hereafter. And if it is easy on that person, if that person finds comfort there, that is a sign that the rest of the journey will be easy on that person. And if it was difficult, فَمَا بَعْدَهُ What comes after it is more difficult than it. And there is no other sight more dreadful than the graveyard. Brothers and sisters in Islam, before that episode, I kept thinking, how can I introduce that subject to you? This subject terrified, righteous, pious people. You know when we travel, we change our beds and we sleep in other beds than the beds that we are used to. We take longer to sleep until we find that comfort in the new bed. Can you imagine? The graveyard is not going to be a bed. It's going to be under the ground. You know when the electricity is turned off, 
You don't have no power. You don't have no condition, no air conditioning. In this dunya, how much you suffer, how much you endure, how much you feel very uncomfortable. The graveyard will have nothing in there for you. The graveyard will be a place that is dark and only the dua and your deeds will lead it for you. I kept contemplating and thinking, how can I introduce this subject to my brothers and sisters in Islam as a reminder for myself too, to prepare. Like the Prophet وسلم, told the companions, Ikhwani, brothers and sisters, for this, get ready. For that graveyard, get ready. Subhanallah, you may be owning houses, homes, palaces in this dunya, but yet all what you're going to get is a hole in the ground. You will be given that hole and you will be left alone in it. They will dig it in the ground, place you there and actually to show you love they will throw sand on you. They will cover you with dirt and sand, making sure that you, know, you do not come back. You know, if those who will cry over you, love you that much, let them dare keep you for a while. They will get tired of you because you are dead. You are useless for them. And they want to deliver you to your mother. You know who's your mother? Earth. And that is why when you get buried, that mother actually gives you a big hug. It's called Dhammatul Qabr, a squeeze. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that the hadith fi uh, Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim Aisha radiallahu anha reported that لو نجا الحديث في مسند الإمام أحمد لو نجا أحد من ضمة القبر لنجا منها سعد بن معاذ If someone would be spared from the squeeze from the grip of the graveyard it would have been سعد بن معاذ For you to know سعد بن معاذ someone whom the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaked because of his death In the wording of Abi Ayyub al-Ansari in, in, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad as well, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said after burying a young boy, he said if someone is to be spared from the grip of the graveyard, it would have been this young boy. لَوْ نَجَا أَحَدٌ مِنْ ضَمَّةِ الْقَبْرِ لَنَجَا مِنْهَا هَذَا الصَّغِيرِ Brothers and sisters in Islam, in the last episode, we stopped when the soul made its journey to the heaven. One soul, the soul of the believer, made it to the uppermost level. And the other one was rejected. And now both souls are in earth, in the graveyard, and they actually assembled with the body in a way that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how about. And that deceased, by the way, would feel the company of those who buried him. And he would feel them departing. But before you depart, you should do what the Prophet وسلم, commanded us to do in the hadith that is narrated by Uthman ibn Affan in Mustadrak al-Hakim Is'alu li akhikum al-tathbeet fa'innahu al-ana yus'al Ask your brothers, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant your brother steadfastness because he will be asked or now he is being asked He's asked about who is your Lord 
What is your deen? What do you say about the man who was sent to you? Brothers and sisters in Islam, fitna tul qabr, the fitna in the graveyard, in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shared it with the companions, hadith Asma bint Abi Bakr radiyallahu anha, and the hadith fi Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, again, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions, أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ تُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِكُمْ مِثْلَ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ It was revealed to me that you get tested in the graveyard. You go through a fitna in the graveyard likes the fitna of the Messiah the Dajjal. And some of the wording of this hadith, the companions with Sunan and Nasai, the companions cried. They wept. That fitna is so difficult, so terrifying. And the mutual characteristics between it and the Antichrist is the difficult situation that a person would have to endure. These two angels, their job is to terrify the deceased. And by the way, whether he is a believer or not, you need to understand this. Their job, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned them, in the wording of Abi Huraira, the hadith that inshallah we will use as evidence for what we will share with you ta'ala regarding this fitna rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described them bluish color very terrifying they look at the deceased in a way to terrify them to terrify him whether he is a believer or not and their names are munkar and nakir they come to wake up the deceased from his sleep, from his sleep, and they ask him those three questions. Let's find out how a believer will be granted steadfastness, and let's find out how a disobedient and how a kafir would be misguided while being questioned by the two angels after a short break, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your hope will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Welcome back to the inevitable journey. Right before the break, I shared with you how can I introduce that subject to you, which is very heavy on the heart. And I chosen to use Hadith Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. And the hadith in Sahih al Imam al Bukhari wa Muslim, Rahmatullahi alayhim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yatba al Mayyitu thalaf, Fayarji'u thnani wa yabqa wahid. The deceased will be followed to the graveyard by three things. Two things will return, and one of them will stay with him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the deceased will be followed by his family members and his friends, and he will be followed by his money and wealth presented in his cars. His son may be driving his car or the nature of the people following his janazah. His wealth will show and his deeds, his actions will be also following him to the graveyard. Family members, they will return. They will not stay with you. You only can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will fulfill 
the command of the Prophet وسلم, regarding burying you quickly and regarding following the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in burying you and regarding giving you some time because the deceased actually feels their company after they finally bury him or her. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an commanded his family members to stay behind because he feels their company. But they depart at the end and they leave him. And also his wealth would depart and leave him. And the only thing that will stay with you is your deeds, your hasanat, your sayyat, your recitation of the Quran, the salah that you prayed, the zakah that you paid, the fasting that you did, the hajj that you did, the enjoyment of good that you did, the forbidding of evil that you did, being kind and dutiful to your parents, being responsibly acting upon your responsibility towards your family members and your children, being a cooler to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being a good mannered person, all of this is what will stay with you. Everything else will leave you alone. They go and they deliver you to the ground. They leave you alone there and they come back. And what will stay with you is your deeds. Let's find out how your deeds will help you through the fitna in the graveyard and throughout your stay in the graveyard. And that is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, I stress this fact and I stress this fact and I stress this fact. We are presenting the inevitable journey to you, not to talk about your end, to talk about your beginning. It's time that you start preparing for this day it's time to prepare some deeds that can help you, insha'Allah, once you are left alone. Your deeds, brothers and sisters in Islam, will be standing by your head. Hadith Abi Hurairah. And again, I want to stress the fact that anything that we say in this episode and the episodes to come, because these are issues of unseen, must be supported by evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and there anyone speaks of the unseen without an evidence. Based on the understanding of the eminent scholars of this Ummah as well, the account that I'm using is Hadith al-Bara ibn Azib radiyallahu anhuma fi mustadrak al-Hakim, Hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an fi Sunan ibn Majah wa Sunan ibn Hibban wa Sunan al-Imam al-Nasai rahimahumullah those are the two accounts that I'm using in order to talk about the fitna in the graveyard. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when those two angels come to wake the deceased up, for the believer, his salah and his recitation of the Quran will be standing by his head, by his head side. The two angels will approach the deceased from the side of his head. They will say, no, not from here. He used to pray. He used to recite the Quran. Then they will proceed to his right side. Guess who is standing in the right side? His fasting. The fasting will say, not from here. He used to fast. Then they will go to his left side. Who's standing in the left side? His zakah. The zakah will say, not from my side. He used to pay zakah. Then they will go to his feet side where the rest of his deeds are there. The rest of his extras, the ihsan that he performed, enjoining good, forbidding evil, speaking the truth. All of this will be standing out there by his feet and they will let the two angels know that not from here he used to do all these good deeds. Brothers and sisters in Islam, they will finally call upon the believer to stand up and to wake up. Look at the believer, how he, he will wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will make the whole scene. Remember, we're talking about that place that you filled with dirt and you left and you went home. This is another world, Akhi. Don't judge this world based on your laws here. This is not a fairy tale. This is will happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى It is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the whole scene that the sun is about to set. So as soon as they wake the believer up, he's going to look at the sun. You know what he's going to say? Ah, oh, I haven't prayed Asr yet. I want to pray. This is someone who was consumed with the Salah. You see, your deeds. Can you imagine? They are supposed to terrify him, to scare him. And if you wake up and you see those awful, and I say awful because they were fashioned to be this way, to scare the deceased. And he looks at them and he says, and he looks at the sun and he says, I have not prayed yet. I want to pray Asr. The sun is sitting and I have not prayed Asr. The two angels will tell the deceased, the believer, you will pray. Wait, you will pray, wait. فَيَنْتَهِرَانَ They will shake him. And then they will ask him, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? Speak, who is your Lord? You see, that's how they're going to present it. That is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it resemble the fitna of the Dajjal. Hadith Asma that we quoted earlier uh, before the break, Al-Bukhari wa Muslim. Because it's supposed to be deceiving. It's supposed to be intimidating. It's supposed to be scaring, terrifying, horrifying to the deceased. Who is your Lord? With confidence. With confidence, brothers and sisters in Islam. The, the deceased will say, Rabbi Allah. You know why? Because he was granted steadfastness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is so easy. Even a first grade would answer this question. If you ask him, who is your Lord? Even a kafir, he will say Allah. It's easy. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant you that steadfastness. And you will qualify to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will entitle you to be steadfast once you are asked these questions. If you brought with you to the graveyard deeds, you were not consumed in the dunya by your family who already left you, by your children who are already left you, by the money that you already left behind and that they are dividing it already. No, you were busy with the deeds. My Lord is Allah. What is your deen? What is your religion? My religion is Islam. What do you say about the man who was sent to you? It is Muhammad sallallahu ala Muhammad. They will ask him this question. وَمَا عَمَلُكْ How did you find out all of this? How did you get to this? You know what he's going to say? This is uh, the, the, the narration of Imam al-Hakim, Abu Abdullah, uh, Hadith uh, al-Bara. قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ I read the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I learned it. And I followed it. And I implemented it in my life. And that is why I'm able to answer you in, with that confidence. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered me steadfastness. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء الله سبحانه وتعالى will grant the believers steadfastness in this dunya and Allah سبحانه وتعالى will misguide the wrongdoers brothers and sisters in Islam may Allah سبحانه وتعالى make us amongst those who are granted steadfastness insha'Allah we will continue talking about this the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.